Today we will be ranking the best and worst Yu-Gi-Oh sets by year. What's up guys, we're back with another epic video. Today we'll be doing a tier list of the best Yu-Gi-Oh sets from 2002 to 2021 by year. We will also be doing a giveaway. I'll be giving away this golden Verte Anaconda. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed. Let me know what you think about the list. Give me your own opinion. You can do, even do your own list. You can search it on tiermaker.com and do your own. So how this is gonna work is it's gonna be every year just for booster set. So like decks and tins and stuff like that are not gonna be included because there's just too many things going on if we do that. So we have over here on the card list, we can see each year what is released for booster packs so in here in 2021 you can see brothers of legend versus destiny dawn of majesty all that stuff so we are going to start off in 2021 i'm going to be doing this based on collecting as well as a little bit of playing because i don't know i have a huge knowledge about that collector we're going to kind of rank them based on their collectability and then throw in like if it's a great you know competitive set we'll throw that in there first off we have 2021 let's see again what is in here so blazing vortex kind of a bad set goes from the past a lot of people didn't like it it does have the ghost rare dark magician it has the blue eyes alternative so that's a pretty big plus for this set just because those cards are so iconic the set will be valuable just because those are in there the rest of the set was not fantastic so that's a pretty decent set overall ancient guardians was horrible there were a few throwback cards which made it a little bit better for collectors but in terms of playability it's really bad lightning overdrive another bad set but it does have the starlight black rose dragon so when you start thinking about it, a lot of these sets that were really bad competitively have a lot of iconic cards in high rarity which makes them pretty nice for collectability so lightning overdrive is not as bad as you might think king's court was actually pretty strong decent reprints it also had the god cards in it what turned out to be actual error god cards so there's like a double set of god cards that's not bad dawn of majesty had the stardust dragon that's about it for collectability burst of destiny was crazy good not really the most collectible set it does have a stratos but because it was so impactful in the meta i think it's still going to be pretty decent and brothers of legend which has the red eyes dragoon very competitive and i think collectible as well so overall after looking at all those sets it's not awful it's definitely not awful insane i think would be stretching it i'm not going to put insane honestly for collectible Ability, the amount of awesome cards that they reprinted in high rarity I'm, I'm leaning toward very good this will probably change as we go along because i'm going to think of something else that i like better and we might bump it down but for now we're going to put that in very good on the collectible side what about 2020 we've got genesis impact phantom rage okay those are not too good not a lot of great stuff rage of raw was awesome because of the ghost rare wing dragon raw it also had some genzo stuff which was pretty cool fairly decent in terms of collectability i kind of liked that set a lot of throwback cards rise of duels was super good it doesn't have a lot of like throwbacks but it was a pretty strong set battles of legend had the 10k dragon that was an iconic collectible like just moment everyone wanted the 10k dragon so that's gonna boost it up there toon chaos was crazy good that was an awesome set so many awesome old school reprints turn Trinity Code, uh, not really much of a collectible set, but a really strong set overall. Secret Slayers, don't really remember a lot about this set, to be honest. Ignition Assault, I don't think it was very good. It did have Lightning Storm and all that stuff. Magical Hero was another one with, like, Dark Magician support. So, when it comes to collectability, this was a pretty good year, honestly. I feel like it was better than 2021. Uh, now that I'm thinking about this, I think 2021 should be decent. Honestly, I think this one is still in the decent category. We might bump this up, though. There was some pretty big stuff, like 10k Dragon and Toon Chaos were huge. Honestly, let's go to very good, just because Toon Chaos was, like, it was huge for collectors. They actually finally started reprinting collectible high rarity cards and, and stuff like that, which was big. It was just big because now they've started doing it every single set. They weren't doing that before. So I think that was a pretty big one. 2019. Okay, I don't think this one's going to be great. Mystic Fighters. I think that had what? Dragon Maids in it? Chaos Impact. It did have the Apollosa, which at this point is becoming collectible, but at the time it was just a meta card. They did start with Starlights this year. So that's like, okay, they started giving collectors something to chase for. That's pretty cool. Immortal Destiny. That was pretty cool. Bakura, people like that one. Fist of the Gadgets complete garbage rising rampage the first starlight set so you'd love to see that apollosa is a cool card a hero's revenge it's just a reprint set for the meta not crazy dark neostorm infinity chasers savage strike i mean all this stuff i guess legendary duelist can be considered somewhat collectible this is definitely going to go at best in the bad category i mean it wasn't good it did the reason it's not an awful they started printing starlights i think that's big for people who open packs collect cards all that stuff just because it's high rarity it's hard to pull gives you something to chase and it just makes the cards more valuable in general so i think that pretty interesting thing to start we're getting Getting into the dark ages, the dead period for collecting. I mean, there was absolutely nothing. This is when I came back, so there was not going on. Hidden, hidden Summoner, Soul Fish. I mean, these are this did have Thunder Dragons, but I guess it's like an old archetype, so you could say that. Legendary Duelist, White Dragon Abyss was cool because it was blue eyes. Uh, Shadows and Valhalla, Cybernetic Revolution. Battles of Legends is always a reprint set for not really collectors, even though this year had the Dragoon, which is nice. Saviors, Flames of Destruction, uh, Star Pack. Anytime there's a Star Pack, they just, just skip it. Ancient Millennium was actually cool. They just started the Legendary Duelist, so that was pretty cool. And Extreme Force. Honestly, this is like, it's probably not the worst year. I feel like this needs to go an awful. 
I mean, for collectability's sake, I'm not, this, remember, this is all from a collector's side. If you're watching this and you're like, dude, like, there were so many great sets that year. We were completely talking about the collectible part of the card game. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw that one in awful. Let's go to 2017. This one might be even worse. Uh, Spirit Warriors, Circuit Break, Legendary Duelist, the first set. So, they did start that, which is cool. Code of the Duelist, man, some of these sets were completely awful in terms of, like, something to actually collect and, like, open for. At this point is when you open a booster box, all you could pull were Seeker Rares. That was the highest rarity. One out of 12. There's absolutely no chase they short printed some cards which made it kind of annoying it was like the same rarity as the secret but it really wasn't the same rarity it was a lot harder to pull which is just annoying because it's like it doesn't look any cooler it's just way harder to pull for some reason because it's a good card or whatever so this is what i consider to be like the worst period for opening cards pendulum evolution maximum crisis we got the ash blossom in there that was like the biggest card of the year star pack about our, like why, why were star packs going for so long i don't, I don't know fusion forces raging tempest this is by far the worst one we've looked at so far 2016 we've got destiny soldiers invasion vengeance dragons of legend was a cool a cool set dark illusion was a dark magician throwback so that's pretty cool dark side of dimensions honestly not a bad set i kind of find it interesting here's a blue eyes set millennium pack wing raiders breakers of shadow this has buster blader in it so there's a lot of throwback archetypes this year which is pretty cool i mean you could go collect those even if they're not super rare i think if they had, had ghost rare starlight rares at this point we have starlight rare blue eyes buster blader stuff like that it would have been much better for collectors this is not the worst because there's some throwback stuff there's dragons of legend which is a pretty cool set and you know it's just not the worst thing ever we're we're gonna throw this one i think we're gonna go in bad for collector because i mean there's no like big chases or anything which is you know what us collectors love we love the big chases is this better or worse than 2019 i think it's worse still because there there was opelosa and stuff in there so 2016 not too terrible 2015 this is okay this is when they stopped ghost rares dimension of chaos so there were ghost rares at this point which is really cool high speed riders clash of rebellions had the ghost rare red eyes flare metal i believe it's called dragons of legend 2 was awesome it had the uh two kingdom which is awesome people love tunes it doesn't matter if you're casual or you're a collector or whatever people love those star pack rv bleh garbage cross souls as a ghost rare world superstars did have those awesome blue eyes and dark magician like i guess retrain they're like world cards or something i don't know those are really cool secret forces and secrets of eternity not the best year ever honestly Honestly, this is an okay year. I would say maybe like average for collectability because I do love Dimension of Chaos. I'm biased. I love it. It has some really cool cards. Probably the back end of decent, closer to bad, but not terrible. 2014, we have new challengers. Duel Duelist Alliance was a pretty awesome set. It wasn't super collectible, but it had a lot of great stuff. It does have a ghost rare in there. It's the beginning of the pendulum, so you might hate it because pendulums, you know, eh. Monster League, that's one of the worst sets ever printed. One day, we'll actually do a tier list on every single set. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know in the comments so I can know if you guys want to do another tier list like this, maybe for something else, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I will consider doing that. We've got Primal Origin. Dragons of Legend, the original, was big because the Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon night that's very collectible people love themselves dark magician girl in any form so that's not bad star pack 2014 like i see the valiant the battle packs okay this there's some good and some bad yeah this is definitely going in the average category i think honestly worse than docs i like 2015 better so we're gonna put that in the decent 2013 shadow specters was considered like a really bad set but i always just love that cover card i think the ghost really looks really good judgment like i mean chicka lattes that just should be top tier shouldn't it? i mean that's really good number hunters battle pack two bleh. okay battle pack two wasn't terrible it did have god cards in it Tachyon Galaxy was pretty cool. A lot of cool cards in there. Cosmo Blazer. We're just kind of in the meh area right now. We're kind of meh. So I think this one is... We're hanging out in decent. We've got a lot in the decent. We might need to move some stuff around. But right now, I'm just feeling meh. It's like, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Let's go to 2012. Now we're getting to some cool stuff. So we got Abyss Rising. I really like that set. There's a lot of cool fish in there. I think people really like it. It's it's, I think it's a fan favorite archetype. Turn of the Duels is also really cool. There's Ghost Rares in all these sets, which is awesome. Other than Hidden Arsenal. Hidden Arsenal is not too great. Epic Dawn was not a bad battle pack. I think it was one of the best ones. Galactic Overlord's not terrible. Ryo and Mega Pack. A lot of throwbacks for GX. People really enjoy that set even to today, which is really cool and order of chaos i think is decent i still i'm not gonna throw this in great but i do think that this one is pretty good let's go like let's put 2012 up here yeah that's what we're gonna go with for now and obviously as we get older in terms of collectability it gets a little bit more easy to be good you know and collectible but maybe we're gonna get something cool okay now we're getting into some really nice photon shockwave that's a big one we got the uh, galaxy eyes photon dragon generation force pretty nice stream victory we got tour guide iconic people love that card i think that's a pretty good there's not a lot of sets this year storm of ragnarok the odin i mean there's the max c there's so many crazy cards bonds beyond time i think i want to throw this one in low very good 
Because there was a lot of impactful cards and just like iconic cards in there. It's going to be towards the back end of very good. I, I like it better than these decent sets. I think it's pretty good. Honestly, I, I feel like 2021 is just in a weird spot. All right, 2010, we got Hidden Arsenal 3, Star Strike Blast, Duelist Revolution is big, Shining Darkness, absolute powerful. I think this is a pretty strong one. It, it feels kind of average though. Duelist Revolution was big. I mean, it had Effect Veiler, it had Solid Morning, it had all that awesome stuff. Uh, Pot of Awesome, of course. Hidden Arsenal 2, Hidden Arsenal 3 are not not too great shining darkness is pretty decent absolute power force they're all pretty decent but they're not too crazy i feel like we're going average again i mean a, a lot of these sets are just years are just average overall because some of the sets are great we might need to do one where we do every single pack which would be interesting okay this is going to be better than most of these right let's put it up here 2009 okay now this is this is some good retro pack 2 is in here my favorite set to collect this might one might be going really high because we've got crimson crisis which is a cool set raging battle with a power tool and all that stuff retro pack 2 of course ancient prophecy we open this all the time on the channel hidden arsenal the original it's it's got a few decent cards and then the stardust overdrive this one has got to be in very good I think we put this up here. Yeah, I think we got to put this one up here around this area. Retro Pack 2 was just so important to me. I really love Retro Pack 2. It's awesome. I think we throw this in very good. It's a pretty good set. All right, it's a pretty good year. Now we get into a really big one. This year, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it yet, but Phantom Darkness, Light of Destruction, Retro Pack 1, Premium Pack 2, which a lot of people love that one, The Duelist Genesis, Crossroads of Chaos, Dark Legends, Anniversary Pack. Do we even need to discuss this one? That's insane. That is an insane year. That might be the best year of all time. There are so many good ones in there. Just absolutely crazy. Like just Retro Pack and Light Destruction, Phantom Darkness would put it in the number one. Then you have Premium Pack 2. You have Duelist Genesis, Crossroads, Dark Legends, and Anniversary Pack. Just crazy. Like that by far blows out any of the years we've seen so far. 2007, we're getting older, so they're going to be more like, wow, this was an awesome collector set. If we were back in time, it might not have felt that way, but you know, it's been years now, so they're getting, they're aging well. Strike of Neos, awesome set. Force of the Breakers, a pretty decent decent set i would say premium pack one is fairly cool it's not too crazy tactical evolution i mean we're starting with ghost shares at this point so we can pull ghost shares which is pretty awesome glass is a very collectible set dark revelation four. Oh wow this was a great year as well yeah this was a good one do we put it at the top though i mean gladiators assault tactical evolution strike of neos and Dark Revelation 4. I mean, I think that has to be in the insane tier. It's going to be less than 2008, though. 8 was much better. I would say if there's another tier, how do we even add a tier? Yeah, I think we need to add a good tier. So I think 2020 is going to go down to good. 2011, I think, also needs to go in the good tier. These two are definitely still insane. I think 2009 is going to stick in the very good, though. It's very good. 2010 is also going to go in good. 2012 is going to go in good. 2021 is going to go in good. I think those are all good. And we've got decent. I think it's a little bit more spaced out. It's not so many average ones we are down to 2006 so we've got dark revolution 3 that's an all right set it's not the craziest like when i open that i'm not like man this is the best set ever but i'm like it's pretty fun cyber dark impact is eh, i mean it's got it's, the cover card's amazing obviously power of the duel is pretty good set to collect i mean it's pretty good enemy of justice bleh, we it's just so many bad memories shadows of infinity does have the sacred beast so i think this one's pretty good i'm not gonna go crazy on this one though i think this one actually 2021 needs to be decent i feel like that is just wrong for that to be the same as 2020 i'm moving this everywhere but it's just so hard to decide actually you know with all the epic ultimate rares this is gonna be very good it needs to be very good right because sacred beasts just themselves and then of course there's a lot of empower the duelist is a very good collectible side almost all the ulties from the hobby boxes are crazy so yeah i think we put that in very good collectible wise no 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 that's that's a good it's a good okay let's continue 2005 okay we're on to another pretty big one we've got elemental energy that's a huge collector set there's a lot of big cards in there dark revelation 2 is better than 3 because it has bls ced all that stuff cybernetic revolution is obviously insane dark beginning 2 it's all right it's not insane but it's all right lost millennium probably one of the it's a fan favorite gx set it's really cool dark revelation 1 was pretty good and flaming attorney is a personal favorite of mine this one has got to be at least very good i would say maybe even probably not insane i think it's better than 2009 though so we're gonna put that right there i think 2005 is pretty good 2004 we're getting to the really old school stuff got rise of destiny it's always just been like that kind of cheaper set to me because whenever i got back into it it was it was really cheap it was really abundant i still kind of like i mean i don't hate it or anything it's just not in the same level as some of these other ones dark beginning one is i really enjoy that set it's very cool if they had put actual secret rares in there it would have been crazy soul of the duelist very cool one has horus all that stuff Exclusive pack not even a really a pack it's all the same guards ancient sanctuary is kind of blah and invasion of chaos is crazy because of invasion of chaos soul of the duelist dark beginning 
I think this is a very strong one, mostly because of Invasion of Chaos. Let's put it in here around the middle of very good. Let's go with that. I think that's about right. It's better than 2009. I mean, you just can't beat Invasion of Chaos with 2009, I don't think. Two more years. We have 2003 Dark Crisis Magician's Force. I mean, that's going to be a big one for a lot of people. Pharaonic Guardians, pretty cool. Legacy of Darkness and Labyrinth of Nightmare. Dark Crisis is cool. I think Magician's Force is the only huge, like, amazing set here. I do think Labyrinth of Nightmare and Legacy of Darkness are very, very good. I think they're good. Ferratic Guardian is awesome. Commons are rares. Hollows, not so great. And the Dark Crisis is sort of similar. A lot of the Hollows are kind of eh. They're not the best ever. So I think that we're going to put 2003. The question is, where on Very Good do we put it? Because... 2004, is it better than Invasion of Chaos? I think this one's the top of very good. It's better than 2004 and 2005. Just, I mean, it has Labyrinth of Nightmare, Legacy of Darkness, Invasion. I mean, those are just so iconic. This one needs to be very good. It's not insane, though. It's not in the level 2007 and 2008, which are just crazy good. And finally, only four sets in 2002. We had Pharaoh Servant, Spell Ruler, Metal Raiders, and Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. This has to go in the very top tier, in my opinion, because it's where it all started. And not only that, iconic cards in each one of these sets what set could you call a dud here they're all incredible they all have amazing cards blue eyes white dragon we got summon skull we got red eyes in here we've got the uh relinquish in here we got blue eyes tune dragon here you got jenzo you got buster blade i mean every every card there's just so many good ones top tier i mean you could have seen that one come in 2002 is where it started yada yada i didn't really think about how good 2007 and 2008 were these two are in top insane tier i think that's pretty fair and then this area 2017 2019 was not great and then before that it was all pretty good but the early the early years are obviously going to be probably the best because they have the oldest most iconic stuff but man 28 2008 2007 they really threw out some awesome reprint sets which put them at the very top so let me know what you guys think about this tier list was i completely right was i completely wrong about anything i think i at least brought up everything that was pretty cool or awesome in each year don't forget to let me know if you guys want to see more tier list videos in the future shout out to tcg trusted cards tone Fo show tomato juice noah j hawaiian Yu Gi Oh, stanley mike nance mimic gecko duelist kingdom cards and spanky mcfarland thank you guys for supporting the channel and i will see you guys next time